Today I want to talk about, um, you know, reinforce again the effort return spectrum, right? What the different options are in that spectrum as far as real estate investing goes. And I want to talk about four steps that you can use to cheat the system, right? So where you can have uh, put in, have lower effort and still continue to maintain those high returns. Right? We're going to talk about that. Welcome to Generational Wealth MD's podcast on financial freedom through investing in real estate. My name is Param Baladandapani. I'm a mom, radiologist, real estate investor, and mentor to others looking to start or scale their real estate portfolios. Thank you for being here today. The goal of this podcast is to provide you with inspiration, strategies, and insight so that you can stop trading your time for money and live life on your terms. If you love the episode, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. Let me first start out by telling you why I decided on this topic. Um, I've been asked to speak uh, to do a webinar for uh, for a group of physicians, and the topic, my title was "Investing in Real Estate as a Side Hustle." Um, and those of you who know me know that I'm very passionate about it. This I. I don't believe physicians need a side hustle as it is we are super busy i don't think physicians need another source of active income right now entrepreneurship among physicians is is awesome and that's hopefully that's for passion income right you're doing it because you're passionate about it and that's why you're putting all the time and effort into it but i honestly believe that all physicians all of us um, need to have a passive income floor and i believe that Real estate is part of that passive income floor, and so uh, so I wanted to do this 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 episode, and I want to talk about um, how to take the hustle out of real estate investing because um, I you know I just want people who are starting. Some of you may be starting out. I want you to know that um, not having the time is not something you need to be worried about. That there are ways to to invest in real estate successfully, even if you want to keep it super passive which is how i think it should be for most people but if you're someone who is already investing in real estate and you find that you're spinning your wheels you're burnt out um, and it kind of feels like a hustle we're going to talk about what you can do to get yourself out of that situation right Um, so it's for both groups of people Um, i want to start out by saying that when i started investing in real estate i had a mentor and my mentor was investing um, was investing out of state he was collecting mailbox money, and um, and that's what encouraged me to start investing in real estate also. And I think that um, if he had been really investing in real estate as a side hustle and spending a lot of time on it, that would have uh, that would have really uh, you know I don't think I would have started right. And so for a lot of us, especially those of you starting out, um, you don't you don't want to have an additional job. And so time, I believe, is our most precious commodity. I've always maintained that we should be working smarter and not harder, uh, because if working hard got you to financial freedom, then most physicians should be financially independent at this point, because we work super hard, right? Um, but, But that being said, now, for those of you who know me, you know that there was a time when I was working full time. Uh, Bill, this was, I believe, in 2020. 2020, 2020, and 2021. There was a, a short period of time when um, I was working full time. I was raising my two and five year olds. This was during the the pandemic. So if you remember, most of us lost childcare, and I was doing a bar project, which is where you rehab a project, you increase the value rapidly, and you 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 create wealth essentially rapidly. I was doing that without general contractors. I was sourcing my own materials. I was I was managing the teams myself and I was furnishing a short-term rental. At the same time, I was also acquiring three turnkey properties. Now, that may seem like a lot, but if you hold on till the end, I'm going to talk about when and why that makes sense. And I'm going to show you why I wasn't essentially hustling um, and uh, why why and when that would actually make sense, right? So we're going to talk a little bit more about it. But, but for most of you, the biggest barrier, you know, when you think about real estate, and this is something that everyone talks about, right? It's the four T's, the dreaded four T's. Nobody wants to be dealing with toilets, tenants, trash, and termite, right? Uh, the only time I dealt with toilets was when I was picking them out for my rehabs. But again, I've shifted from that strategy at this point. So uh, otherwise, I would never want to be in that position. I enjoy getting two to three months of vacation every year uh, and spending that out of the country. 
Uh, I enjoy uh, spending less than an hour a month on my portfolio and a lot of members within our community are looking to do essentially the same thing, right? Even within the Creating Generational Freedom coaching program. Uh, the thing about real estate and, and I think the beautiful thing about real estate is that you can tailor it to fit your needs, you know, to absolutely fit your needs. And today I want to talk about, um, you know, reinforce again the effort return spectrum right what the different options are in that spectrum as far as real estate investing goes and i want to talk about four steps that you can use to cheat the system right so where you can have uh put in have lower effort and still continue to maintain those high returns right we're going to talk about that so let's talk about the spectrum first so some of you may be tuning in um and you haven't really heard me talk about this but as far as the effort return spectrum goes um, on the one end you have uh, the options for those who want to be super passive when they invest in real, real estate, and that is when you invest in a syndication. Right? And, I, and um, GW Capital has brought multiple syndication opportunities to this community. And when you invest in a syndication as a passive investor, and someone else is, you know, doing the hustle part of it, uh, taking care of the rehabs, you can get average annualized returns on average close to 20%. Right? That's the number. Now. If you compare that to the 4% safe withdrawal rate that you have with your stock bond portfolio in retirement, you can see that it's already 5x that number, right? And that's why we invest in real estate. We invest in real estate so you can get to financial freedom in two versus 20 years, right? Compared to what, you know, 20 years in the stock market. So it's like compressing those timelines. But again, even within that, there's a spectrum and syndications are on the more passive side where your returns are um, you know, average annualized returns are around 20%. Now, uh, the next one and that line and pretty close to where syndications are would be owning turnkey rentals, where again, uh, you get that around 20% aver average annualized returns when you factor in the equity that you're building up from debt pay down and from market appreciation that happens over time, right? So you're still around that same number, but over time, when you hold that property, because your rents are also increasing because of uh, inflation, over time, you'll notice that your returns increase, right? So that's why you see a little boost in your returns over time. That's because um, when you have a leveraged property and you have inflation, um, you are benefiting from hedging against uh, inflation because of that fixed debt and you're seeing an increase in returns over time and someone who would choose to do this would be somebody who wants to have a little more control who really wants a little more um, you know those slightly higher returns as opposed to just investing in syndications and then you have the other end of the spectrum where you have a, a long-term rental that you are doing a uh, rehab on and you're rapidly increasing uh, your equity in the property or short-term rentals that you're self-managing and you know there are a lot of physicians who are trying to tap into that strategy because when you're on that part of the spectrum you can have anywhere from 50 to 200 uh, percent ROI in year one which is significant and that's how you compress those timelines and get to financial freedom faster right so that's the effort return spectrum and so let's see what you can do where you want to be in those higher return part of the spectrum, but you still want to lower your effort, right? So I'm going to talk to talk to you about four steps you can take uh, to do that. And then the first one in that is going to be automation, right? Um, so within the Creating Generational Freedom program, right, uh, we have physicians just like you who are within a, you know, one of my one-on-one -on -one clients, within a period of four months, she acquired 23 units and uh, the reason she did it was because she wanted to shelter over half a million of her uh, spouse's income from taxes and use that to keep scaling and get him to financial, get the family to the point where they were, they're financially free so they could buy back their time, right? And so how do you do that without having systems in place? So let's talk about what systems you need to have to be able to do something like that, to grow rapidly, uh, to to really tap into those advanced tax strategies by spending more time on real estate, but still maintaining your sanity, right? So the first thing is going to be automation. And um, I talk about this in more detail during the 3D Live event that we have coming up. So for those of you who haven't signed up, it is uh, generationalwealthmd.com slash event. Make sure you show up live. This is just a, a, a snippet of what you're going to, um, you, it's super high yield. We're going to be talking about everything from goal setting to uh, taking the next steps to automating and optimizing. So, you know, so that's a very high yield. But just to give you a few examples of what 
you can do to automate one of the most important things you can use is software right you can use software for long-term and short-term rentals for uh, guest and tenant communication for rent collection um, there are uh, I mean right now it's super easy for you to just use your phone and really take care of a lot of things and uh, automate them so you aren't really spending time on it and things get done the way you want it done without you having to interfere right you can automate your guest communications you can have messages that are automatically set up to go uh, where you don't really even have to respond to it. You can have uh, pre-canned responses that go out to your uh, guests when, um, when they type a question in, even before you can get to responding to it, right? So automation is a big part of really being in that uh, higher uh, return part of that spectrum and, and significantly lower your efforts, right? Uh, another thing you can do is uh, syncing your calendar with your cleaners, right? That's for short-term rental holders also. Um, if you have contract services, uh, your payments that you're making out to your HOA, all of that can be completely automated. And that makes a huge difference in terms of the amount of time that you're spending on your property. Same thing for rehab projects, right? For those of you doing rehab, when I did my first rehab, it took me, and because I was doing this without a general contractor, right? So. As far as automation goes, once you learn to automate your systems, you create uh, you know, standard operating procedures, you have an SOP, you, you have that system in place. The time it took me to do a rehab went from three months to three weeks. And then the second time I was doing it, even though the rehab took three weeks, I was probably spending less than a couple of hours uh, a day monitoring things, right? And that's because I wanted to monitor it. So automation is a big part of uh, really being able to uh, get those higher returns, but really significantly reduce the amount of time you're spending on your portfolio. Now, the second part is going to be delegate. And this is where you identify your strengths and weaknesses, and you can either find someone who's trained to do the task and you pay them more, or you find someone um, like a VA where you can pay them less and you can train them to do it. So you still have, even when you're delegating, you have multiple options in terms of how much you want to outsource and how much you want to pay for that outsourcing, right? But, you know, as far as delegation goes, um, I'm sure a lot of you can relate. For physicians, this is very, very, very hard to do, especially because you always feel like you can do it better. And that's why I say when you're doing this, it's always important to remember that your time is super valuable and there's a way to delegate and have SOPs in place, you know, standard operating procedures, where you can tell them exactly how you want them to do it. You can make sure everything is getting done and still take it off your plate. And that's really important. So a um, few examples uh, it, with long-term rentals, I've always maintained that with long-term rentals, it's just easier to have a prop to have property management in place. Now, that being said, we have a lot of members uh, st you know, uh, within the Creating Generational Freedom program who love self-managing. They're completely comfortable doing it. They're doing it for multiple reasons. But um, within within the program, you know, with the property management teams that we work with, we've negotiated rates where the rates are significantly lower than if you were to go to them individually, just because we're going in as a community. And I mean, even if you were at that average 10% rate that property managers charge for long-term rentals, it still makes absolute sense to outsource that, take that off your plate. You don't want to be, uh, you know, uh, worried about leasing and uh, maintenance and uh, get, you know, tenant communication, right? So having a property manager, when you are doing those rehab projects, now I talked about how I like doing them myself. You don't need to, you can use a general contractor. Um, oftentimes, sometimes your property manager has a general contractor uh, that they work with where they really know what materials to pick for that market. They have a color scheme going, they work with designers. So you can completely outsource all of that. Bookkeeping, same thing with bookkeeping. Uh, having a CPA or an attorney take care of your entity structuring, right? You can totally do it yourself. But again, this, this is where it boils down to how much do you value your time, right? And if you feel like you're hustling and you're burning out, you want to be outsourcing all of those things to someone who's more qualified to do it because A, they will do a better job at uh, making sure your systems are foolproof, but uh, it's also better to take that off your plate and give yourself breathing room, right? So uh, bookkeeping, again, you could use a virtual assistant to do it. You could use a bookkeeper who may just oversee it or may take over all of it. You can structure it however you want to, but the truth is that if you're spending more than two to three hours a week on your real estate portfolio when it's stabilized, now during acquisition, 
could be a little more, right? If you're furnishing uh, as you're stabilizing the property, once you've stabilized it, if you're spending more than two to three hours a week on your portfolio and you're not doing it because you want to materially participate and save on taxes, then you really need to think about delegating, right? That's that's super important. Um, as far as those of you who have short-term rentals, you know, sometimes it sounds overwhelming, right? Oh, I have to self-manage my short-term rental. But remember, you have multiple options. And again, there's that spectrum, right? You have the property managers who take completely take it off your plate where they charge anywhere from 15 to 30% to come take care of all guest communications, talking to the cleaners and handymen, taking care of management, right? Or you have your co-hosts who charge uh, significantly less, around 10% on average, and they will help with guest communications and they may or may not take up uh, the other aspects of self-management. And then you can have a virtual assistant. Then we have actually have coaches within our Creating Generational Freedom program who can help train you in terms of creating those systems, you know, uh, you know, getting co-hosts set up, getting virtual assistants set up to the point where they can completely take care of all of these things, including SEO optimization and guest communications and ordering supplies for your short term rental. All of this can be taken off your plate. You just need to have those systems in place, right? One of our coaches has is hoping to generate over a million dollars in revenue this year from his short term rentals. And he's completely outsourced that to a virtual assistant where he's paying significantly less than if he were to have a property manager, right? So again, multiple, multiple options to take it off your plate. Um, some of our members uh, within, well, I would say like at least 30% of members within Creating Generational Freedom will buy, were purchase furnished short-term rentals so that they're taking that task completely off their plate, right? So they don't have to go in, furnish it, they can buy something that's already functioning as a short-term rental, and, and that's a way of taking that off your plate, right? Um, so like I said, your listing, SEO optimization, you can find people to do all of this for you. So you're focusing on your zone of genius and you're really valuing your time. Now, the next step is deleting. Some things need to be deleted. I, I, I almost feel like purchasing a furnished short-term rental should be over here because you're entirely deleting that step process of uh, designing the space, furnishing it, uh, which can take up a significant amount of time, right? So um, deleting, I think, is a big part of time management and productivity. Because honestly, if you look at it, end of the day, 80% um, of the results we generate are because of 20% of our activities, right? So I want you to focus on that 20% and kind of get rid of everything else. Now, um, I personally I don't like going over the MLS listings uh, every day and finding the property that makes sense for me and then reaching out to my property manager, especially for long-term rentals. Oftentimes, I, I love working with investor agents who are able to do all of that screening for me based on my criteria and are able to bring those properties to me um, knowing that it, the numbers work, knowing that the layout is great, it's in a great location, it meets all of my criteria. And that's how I've purchased most of my uh, you know, long-term rentals, right? Most of my portfolio is as such. And so that's a way of taking that, deleting that off your plate, right? And having, having systems in place where they get done, but you're not spending time on it, right? And so again, here, this is where the right investor agent becomes super important, which is why within Creating Generational Freedom, we have a network of investor agents who are great at what they do. They are great at taking your criteria and sourcing the property for you so that you don't have to spend time on it, right? And then finally, the last step is optimizing. If you know me, I'm like big on optimizing and boosting returns. And so let's talk about what that looks like, right? So um, optimizing returns, I talk about this a lot. When you're considering when you're considering doing a rehab project, like a burr project, and you're considering putting a lot of time into that property, um, you can do it, right? But and it's great because whenever you have a rehab project, you're uh, you're incre adding value, you're increasing the equity within that property, you're increasing rent, so you're boosting your returns in so many ways. But I always say that it, if it's possible, do that at a point where you're also able to materially participate. And if this terminology is something you're hearing for the first time, guys, join the three-day live event. I'm gonna go into all of this in detail. Um, that's generationalwealthmd.com slash event. But do it at a point where you're able to materially participate and also tap into those advanced tax strategies. So you're saving an additional six figures uh, in terms of uh, you know getting a six figure refund from uh, in, uh, when you get when you get your tax uh, when you file your taxes. So you're boosting your returns further, right? So 
optimizing, timing your strategy, making sure that when you're putting a lot of effort into it, that makes sense. That's super important. Now, when I was working full time and doing the Burr project while I was acquiring other properties, the important thing to note is that that was a year where I was doing that on a short term rental. And so I was doing it because I wanted to materially participate and meet criteria. So I was sheltering my clinical income from taxes. I believe that was the year I sheltered $250,000 of clinical income from taxes. I did another board project. I've done other board projects. And every time it was because I wanted to materially participate and meet the requirements so that on the back end, I was able to shelter, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars from taxes. So I was getting paid for that work and I was getting paid at a higher rate than uh, my my job as a physician, right? So again, I'm valuing my time. Um, and you know, when I said that I was doing the rehab and I was acquiring additional properties at the same time, I have systems in place where even when I'm acquiring a property out of state, it's from the point when I the property is brought to me by my agent to when I close on it and I have a notary come home and I sign the paperwork, that's not more than two hours of time um, that I'm spending on acquiring, right? So you need to have those systems down pat um, and really, if you're putting the time in, make sure it counts for something, right? Um, again, similarly, when we talk about optimization, there's also the cash flow analysis part of it, right? So are you really, for the equity you have in your property, and this is where it's important to run your numbers, for the equity you have in your in your portfolio, are your returns optimized, right? So can you optimize that further? What can you do to you know, ensure that, and, and it's okay to spend a little bit of time on that because you could be significantly bumping up your returns if you're uh, freeing up trapped equity somewhere and, and diverting it to somewhere else where you can be generating significantly higher returns. If you're doing that, again, if you're optimizing your portfolio, it's okay for you to be able to be spending some time on it because again, it's like how much time, what is my time worth? And for every hour that I'm putting in, how much am I able to increase my returns and that needs to make sense for a physician who's making you know a hundred to five hundred dollars an hour in your in your clinical job so when you have a locum's position you really want to make sure that the time that you spend in your real estate portfolio also amounts to that much right um and so i really want you to start valuing your time and hopefully these four strategies uh you know if you find yourself spinning your wheels and you're spending like i said if you're at that point where you're stabilized and you're spending more than two to three hours a week on your portfolio, then something needs to shift. And you, I want you to go through all of those four steps, you know, go through what your day looks like and see what needs to be eliminated, delegated, um, automated, uh, or optimized further, right? Um, and so, like I said, we have so many members who are physicians, two, two income uh, households where both people are working full time or single moms with, you know, with young kids who are able to invest in real estate scale, but they're doing it the right way without burning themselves out because investing in real estate is not a side hustle. It shouldn't be. Um, and that's what I honestly feel. And like I said, again, at every point, like everyone is gonna have different goals and real estate is not a one size fits all. And so find the strategy that, that makes the most sense for you, right? At any given point that, you know, the these your life is fluid, right? Your, your needs are gonna be different. So at different times, uh, you're going to have, you know, you, you may want to be super passive and there are times when you may want to be super active, right? Um, and, but the truth about strategy in real estate is that all these strategies are also fluid, right? Um, you could be super active in your short-term rental one year and then the next year you could completely give it to a property manager and be completely hands-off. So all, I want you to think of real estate as being and these strategies being super fluid, you have the ability to shift at any point, you can pivot at any point, but at every point it has to meet your goals at that time, right? Um, and so I wanna bring it back to the fact that if you're putting three to four hours a month into real estate, and if it's generating $10,000 a month in passive income, right? This is just the cash flow without factoring in anything else, and that's post-tax dollars, then I think that's a very powerful way to spend your time. Three to four hours a month for $10,000 in post-tax income. I can't make that as a position, right? Um, and so I want you to be very intentional about where you put your time, how you spend your time. And again, for those of you who really want to deep dive more, learn more, um, definitely join the three-day live event. Uh, it's March 16th to the 23rd, 16th to 21st and the 23rd. We're going to talk about building a recession-resilient portfolio, but 
personalizing your strategy, next steps. Um, you know, so that's really important as far as taking action. And then again, about boosting returns, because I love talking about it, how you can 10x your financial freedom. Uh, and again, the link is generationalwealthmd.com slash event. Hey there. If you're thinking that the only path to retirement is working harder, saving more, and investing in the stock market till you hit 65, I invite you to the 10X Your Financial Freedom Through Real Estate Experience. This free virtual coaching event from March 16th to the 23rd is going to be a game changer. And yes, I know that you can do it even in the current market with interest rates the way they are and even through a recession because market price is just one part of the equation in real estate. And I'm going to show you a time-tested proven strategy where you can tap into other ways to boost your real estate portfolio returns that you have absolute control over that will get you to financial freedom in a fraction of the time. So if you're ready to take back control of your time and income, if you're struggling with getting your first long-term or short-term rental and want to do it right, if you're ready to go from a handful of rentals to 10 x in your portfolio, I'm going to be going over my proven framework that I used to get to financial freedom at 41. Plus, we will be figuring out your smart goals and action plan, taking into account your risk appetite, goals and resources. And we'll be figuring out the small next step and timeframes that you need to set to actually help you move the needle so you can accelerate to financial freedom while paying less in taxes and creating a recession resilient portfolio. I want you to go ahead and register for the event at generationalwealthmd.com slash event, and I will see you soon.